putting the music into music theory, I wonder how many of us tend to use theory books as the point to teach music theory. I know as a child, I really, really struggled to, uh, to understand music theory. And that is because I'm pretty sure there wasn't the music in it. Now, I'm going to demonstrate today with the help of Wallace and Gromit. Now, some of you might know, and here I've even got a little, a little Gromit puppet. And um, some of you might know I live in Wensleydale, wonderful Wensleydale, which is the home of Wensleydale cheese. And here I have got a piece of delicious Wensleydale and ginger cheese, even, which I got from the creamery just up the road where they make the cheese, along with Wallace and Gromit on sale. And the reason I've got them is because I'm going to use one of my favourite pieces. It's an arrangement, actually. Um, from the new ABRSM piano exam syllabus to demonstrate how we can bring the music into music theory. And this is the Wallace and Gromit theme. If you don't know it, here it is, the beginning of it. I love its energy, I love its jolliness. I love its slightly quirky feel that completely captures the cartoon characters, the animations that we have and the stories that go behind Wallace and Gromit. And I think grade four pupils will, will really, really love doing this. So what can we teach at this level? Well, when I look at it, I can see actually it's got a really clear chordal structure and we can certainly teach or help our students to develop their understanding of chords. So chord one and chord five, seven. Okay, I'm gonna be doing this with a grade four student fairly soon, and she already has an understanding, has had for several years about those two chords, the tonic chord and the dominant seventh chord. Really fundamental to all our musical understanding. So get going on them really, really soon. Um, and so I can teach that. And we can we can even have a little bit, bit of fun doing our own accompaniment. Yeah, that's one thing. Um, teaching chords, it's it's got mostly chord one and chord five, but there are other. There's a minor chord here as well, which is good to introduce. And then, of course, because we've got chords, we can introduce and we can start to pick out the cadences. And again, it's got lots and lots of lovely cadences. There's one here. And why not bring a bit of oral work into it as well, a bit of ear training. What cadence can they hear? Get them going on that very, very soon. Get them playing an F major scale. rhythms. Now there is a section that does this um, and that is made up out of quavers and then it's got this little quite complex semi-quaver rhythm um, that maybe they could write that out. Could they copy out the rhythm of this bar and write in the counting underneath so that they really get that firm understanding. Um, one and two and three, three and a four and a, yeah, is what it would need to be written, which is a little bit fussy, to be honest, to count aloud, as you just heard me to do it there. Get them to write it, though, and they will begin to understand how that rhythm works. To play it, I wouldn't use that counting. I would come up with some words, and I have done here. Um, it's going to go, Wensley Dale, Wensley Dale, I like cheese, so do you. Yeah, it doesn't really make any sense, but Wensley Dale, I like cheese, so do you. And that way they'll capture, they'll catch that rhythm very easily. But at the same time, we're getting them to write it out for us. Um, what else has it got? Ah, it's got lots of achicaturas. <laughs> opportunity for them 
to um, both practice their achikachuras and also to uh, become more familiar with them and how they're crushed onto the other note. Just a little tip here, when I teach achikachuras in this kind of way, I will get my students to play them together. So D sharp and E at the same time, and they'll let go of the D sharp, the second finger, but the third finger will stay there. Combined with a nice gesture, really, really very straightforward. Not heavy, not down there, all off. And the whole piece is off, off, off really. So we've got ornaments there, we've got a lovely spread chord. And of course they can voice that then at the end. Um, and one final point I think is you've got to go and listen to the original uh, soundtrack for this and hear that it is played by a brass band. Now, brass bands are everywhere around here, as you might expect. They're called silver bands. We have a Hawes silver band who meets up the road. We have another silver band over in the next dale, which is Swaledale, and that's the Mooka silver band. We have Laban silver band. So there is a big brass band tradition that is still alive and kicking, and this is played by a brass band. So why not go and have a look at the instruments of a brass band, decide which instruments are playing what, you know, who's playing this. And you're going to have the tuba, aren't you, and the euphoniums go in here. And then, is it the cornets? Yeah, playing, playing the melody up there. Have they got a drum kit in there? What is the rhythm of the drum kit? So that way you can really, really expand their knowledge and their understanding all from the music that they are either learning or they're about to learn. So never divorce the theory from the music because the music is the point where it all starts and you can relate the theory absolutely to the music as you go along. So bring music theory to life by putting the music in there. I'm just off to enjoy my little bit of Wednesdaydale cheese. I hope you found that helpful. See you soon. Bye for now.